Muna and Protag stood beaming over their son as a large surgery bot reconstructed and replaced Archie's severed arm. Brilliant move sending that message to Lothario. He was the only one that believed in the technology. I sure am a believer now. Where is Uncle Lothario anyway? We're taking turns. He's with Sid now. And Mr. Kick? Protag and Luna looked to each other, then to Archie. Down the hall, Sid lay on an operating table with a gaping hole in his chest as Janie cried over his body. Lothario stood at the edge of the room with Dr. E.L. 41. Mr. Kick's heart could not take the stress of today's events. We tried all we could, but it is permanently shorted out. Why not just give him a new one? His technology is so outdated that there is no proper replacement. Put him on a data stick then. We'll upload him to a new body. Every port is outdated. Even the adapters needed to transfer him to a new body no longer exist. Unbelievable. Poor Sid. Patry's raised voice was heard at the end of the hall. You know who I am, you nitwit! I'm on the poster in the lobby! Just direct me to whoever wants me there the most! Janie was incensed, sharply leaving Sid Kick's side, rushing to the doorway. See that he doesn't set one foot in this room! Janie, darling, I have news! It was R-O-R-Y, my granddaughter, who was behind all of this. Was it she who was too cheap to update his own partner and assistant for all these years? So now that he's... he's... Patry moved towards the doorway. Don't get hysterical, I just... Lothario swiftly moved in front of Patry. I think you should sit this one out, Pop. I just need to explain. Pop, I love you, but it's been a hard day on all of us. I see, my boy. Patry retreated to the other side of the hospital. Christy exited the elevator running into Lothario's arms. Nice to see you too. I brought your father here. So you're the one we should thank for that, huh? He's completely innocent in all of this, and the real culprit is someone you will not believe. Patry decided to try his luck in the maternity ward, where he would meet his new grandson. Hugh was stationed outside of the viewing room, where every infant bot had its own way of coping with their first moments of life. Orion was not hard to spot, he appeared as a human newborn who was playing video chess on a data pad, propped up by four metal tentacles forming out of his back. Holy smokes, that's him? Good to see you made it, Ree. And yeah, that's my boy. Patry stepped forward and knocked on the glass. Hey, little guy, I'm your grandfather. Orion looked up from his game, smiling, waving his left arm and left tentacle. He is deliciously macabre. I love him already. Where's my daughter? Behind you. Patry went for a hug, then quickly remembered, so he saluted. Congratulations. I just had a child. I will gladly accept a hug. I need a hug. Patry embraced KVXIV. Besides, we're the only members of the family who do not presently hate your rusted innards. Patry broke the hug. Yes, I got some of that already. They all find you at fault for today's tragedy. I tried to tell them I'm not, but they won't listen to me. We will. Of course you will. The human just has to be the only sensible being in the building. Lothario came running into Archie's room with Christy by his side. Heads up, brother. I got some news. Father is here. The staff already alerted me. Not just that. Antag is back, man. Impossible. Not with R.O.R.Y. skills, apparently. No doubt, he is coming to kill me. He already tried. The explosion. He has to know it wasn't you that- He might not, especially if R.O.R.Y. has been pulling his strings. What are you going to do? Get ahead of him. You just listened to One Cycle to Span, Season 8, Episode 9, Part 4. This audio drama was written, recorded, performed, and edited by Drew Manning. If you enjoyed it, please stay tuned to this channel. Thank you for your time, and have a great one.